여러분 안녕하세요. 어, 제가 지금 어디에 와 있을까요? 뒤를 보시면 은 아시겠지만 전 지금 시카고 옵션 거래소에 와 있는데 이게 실제 옵션이 지금 거래되고 있는 바로 그 현장입니다. 시카고 옵션 거래소는 사실 세계에서 가장 큰 옵션 거래소 중에 하나인데요. 제가 여기를 찾은 이유는 현재 시장에 굉장히 많은 월배당 상품이 나와 있고 저희 에이스 ETF에서는 지난 4월에 국내에서 최초로 이제 데일리 옵션을 사용한 전략을 소개를 했는데요. 어, 이에 데일리 옵션이란 사실 어떤 것이고 시장에서의 역할은 어떤지 등에 대해서 조금 얘기를 해보고요. 현재 내가 투자하고 있는 그 상품이 도대체 어떤 건지 좀 이해를 높일 수 있는 그런 기회가 되기를 바라면서 지금 굉장히 시끄럽죠? 제 목소리 잘 들어가고 있나요? 지금 굉장히 시끄럽죠? 제 목소리 잘 들어가고 있나요? 네, 그 바라면서 이야기를 좀 전문가 분을 모시고 나눠보도록 할게요. Hi. Hi, thank you for having us here. It's so wonderful to see this all lively like actions going through. Yes, thank you for coming. We're really excited to be doing this from the trading floor today. Yeah, so could you like maybe briefly introduce about yourself and maybe SIBO? Absolutely. Um, we are a um, global exchange, 27 markets around the world. Uh, we focus in options, futures, FX, uh, digital. Uh, I'm just really excited to be here today with you. A lot of products, yes. actually, a lot of products. So maybe to start with, so zero DT options, we're going to talk about zero DT. Could you like briefly give us an explanation about like zero DT, how they evolved, the history, like a little bit of history? Sure, absolutely. I think, um, you know, kind of the biggest point we like to make about zero DT options is they're not a new product. Uh, as somebody that designs new products for SIBO, we really want to make sure it's, it's known that this wasn't really a new product. Options were created in, in 1973, mm -hmm. and for a long period of time, we basically had quarterly and monthly expiry options. Um, in 2005, we introduced something that was called the weekly option. So now options that expired every Friday um, of the week. And then in what would it have been of 2016, we introduced Monday and Wednesday options. So now at that point, we had options that expired Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of every week. And then just recently in 2022, we, in, we kind of rounded out that suite and introduced Tuesday and Thursday options. So at that point, we now had options that expired every day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so with that, when we launched Tuesday, Thursday options, the, the phrase zero DTE really became something and kind of a household name. But all that really meant was you had an option that expired every single day of the week. So not a new product. They were still options on the S&P 500 oh, so or SPX. I thought SPX. it was just new product that was introduced in 2012 and T2, but it's not. It's not. It was just an expansion of the expir expiration cycle, um, but it's still always been an option on the SPX and, and traded in this crowd. And so we've just kind of rounded out the suite so that you now had options every day of the week. Oh, that expires in every day Correct. of the week. Oh, Correct. that's great. I mean, but it became like extremely popular like right away from 2022. Can you share like some numbers to get like the idea, like how much volume they're taking in? Sure, it is. I mean, obviously the S&P market as a whole has grown very, very quickly since the introduction of Tuesday, Thursdays. And so I would say in 2021, 2022, we were, SPX was averaging about 1.3 million contracts a day. We are now up to, let's call it around 3 million contracts a day. So volumes have more than doubled over that time horizon. And with that, zero day to expiry options make up roughly, let's call it 45%, 45 of our volume. Of yes, the daily volume. Of the daily volume wow. are options that expire that day. That's a lot. So who's actually driving? I mean, who's like the primary user of that zero DT options? Are they like mainly institutional investors or in like retail investors? So it's it's a breakdown of both. Right now, I would argue we see a, roughly about 65% institutional oh. and the remainder that are trading are retail. And I think what we're, what we're most encouraged about is the diversity of use case. And so I think what makes a market really robust is having users use a product for multiple different reasons. And so right now we're seeing users use this for effectively hedging purposes, whether you want to hedge against an upside move or a downside move. We're seeing uh, people come in that are after yield capture, so kind of overwriting of options. 
The one nice thing and that we'd like to highlight for, for everyone is that from a risk perspective, about 95% of the customer order flow that we see coming into zero day to option, zero day to expiration options have capped risk. The risk is defined going in. You know your max loss before you start the trade, which I think is really important for that retail aspect and that retail customer. Because of that defined risk aspect, combined with the diversity of use case, I think it's become a really robust market and that's why you've seen the growth that we've seen. I'm quite impressed by the large volume of uh, individual trades mm -hmm. back in Korea. Like um, investors, they perceive like option very difficult, risky, gamble like very like speculative product. But then things are kind of different here. So how do you see this? Like I do think options tend to kind of get this perception that they're very risky. Options were actually created to help lower the risk or lower volatility of your portfolio. While there is an element of risk and there's an element of leverage to an option trade, if used correctly, they can actually massively reduce the volatility of your portfolio and of your, you know, the volatility of your return. Sure, it gives a lot of more flexibilities to the Absolutely. investors in the end, right? I mean, talking about volatility, the VIX index, mm -hmm. you know, the Zebo index that measures the market volatility. So is there like a correlation between VIX index and the option trading volume? I think many look to kind of that correlation between high VIX, high volumes. I think in in events or in, in economic situations where volatility is very high, you see an influx of volume around those events. But currently, I would argue the VIX is historically very low. We're at around 13, 14 right now in the VIX. And yet we're still seeing volumes that are higher than maybe we saw back in, let's call it the financial crisis or the flash crash. And then with each individual event that you might see a spike in the VIX, we see higher volumes with that event. But if you combine the two, you continue to effectively see higher highs and higher lows as you move as more and more people adopt using options in their portfolio. It'll be great to see all these trades you know, going around because like, like looking outside, we don't know who's actually driving and everything, but you guys know, right? Right, um, <laughs> it, it, exactly. It, it's been exciting to watch the trend mm -hmm. and it's been exciting to see I think we've seen a little bit of an influx as of late from the institutional community mm -hmm. using Zero DTE. Mm -hmm. And so now that the fact Zero DTE has been out there for, let's call it just over two years, we have two years worth of historical data. Yeah. And with that historical data, now we can build strategies and look to Im look to Im look to Im look to implement those strategies. Exciting, huh? It's, it's always good. Um, look to implement those strategies with a use case that's been tested out through data. And I think because of that increased in data and, and how long Zero DT has been out there, we're now seeing increased use cases pop up. There were many worries that the daily option could have negative impact to the market, like increasing volatility and mm -hmm. etc. So how do you actually see? I think it's it, it was a realistic concern. I mean, it's something we've tried to address through data. We've seen, and if you look since the, the introduction of Tuesday and Thursdays, if you look at both close to close realized volatility or even intraday realized volatility, we haven't seen a spike with the increase in volume in trading in zero DTEs. The, the data isn't backing up the claim that zero DTE is causing more volatility in the market. Oh, right. Like many market players, they're like constantly playing around with the daily options to come out with better, maybe innovative, more value added solutions for the client. Mm -hmm. So for us, actually, we have introduced like US 15% distribution ETF series using this covered call strategy by selling the daily OTM call options. But what is interesting is that when you think of a covered call by definition, long on stock and then you're selling the call or if you think about like an apple like you're long on apple and then you're selling the same option of that apple you're kind of sacrificing your growth potential and it could be like somewhat nonsense to for some people what we kind of played around like for example is that we kind of long on big seven tech stocks so seeking alpha in that place but then selling the broad market otm index so like selling the beta for the yield enjoy your ride on the stocks but then still enjoy the um, yield so like of course we do have like a plain vanilla like long us 500 and then shorting us 500 as well so how do you actually view such you know developments of people using like zero dt options do you think like they're like 
going to like increase market flow or increase chaos to pro investors? Or I actually don't see it doing that. I actually see it having the reverse effect. Whether it's uh, the mag seven, as we kind of call it, stocks, or whether it's the index itself, being able to structure and define that outcome with the with the overwrite of a call just gives you more optionality. It gives you more granularity to define what return you want relative to what risk profile you want. And I think the trend in, of moving in that direction is wonderful for the market because it's people just better understanding risk reward profiles and then investing in what they're comfortable with and what fits their in, in investment profile. And so I love the use of that. I think the idea of overwriting and using calls has always been a great concept. It's not a risky one because you're secured by the underlying asset, you own it. And I think the strategy has been around for a long time. I actually think it's been underutilized. And so the likes of firms like yourself that are now bringing more visibility into those strategies, I think only helps diversify the market and helps diversify those strategies so that investors can find the one that particularly fits their, their objectives and then invest in that. And I think at the end of the day, isn't that what we're after is making sure each investor has the tools, has the products to be able to invest in exactly what their objective is to define the outcome they want. Because each and every one of us are like risk profiles different, That's like right. we want different things. I'm more of a safe person, but then still <laughs> people will want more. So this will be maybe my last questions. How do you see the future of options? Do you think is there like more room for innovation? Because some people say that there might be no more room for a better product to come out. So how do you think about this comment? I think um, it's a great question. Um, and as somebody that's tasked with, with designing new option products, new derivative products, I'm probably overly optimistic because by nature I have to be. I think there's huge room for growth, huge room for growth. You know, there are so many different strategies, so many different exposures, so many different ways to trade risk that options afford you. But by nature, the optionality that you can give people with their investment that I think, you know, we're only starting to scratch the surface with where we can go with these influxes in volume around new products like when we introduced Tuesday, Thursdays, and now you have volume that's exploded in S&P, it's only bringing visibility into the benefits that, that come from trading options. We're kind of on the upswing and on the uptrend of that momentum, and I look forward to developing products in the future that can capitalize on that. Sure, so more room, I mean, more, more way room. to go, more way to go. There's yes. no definite, like the perfect product. And it's also, you know, education's key, and it's, it's like why doing things like this are so important is is we're out there and, and having these conversations bringing the visibility in and educating the investors to what's available is is where you need to start and it's something SIBO is very very dedicated to we have our options institute which really focuses on on elevating and yeah the investor I actually IP. learned a lot from that you know yeah. website the exactly. option institute I love the Chicago pizza there was an example <laughs> talking about cover call strategy with that so exactly. yeah it was really good and we invest a lot of resources in that and we mm -hmm. think through increasing investors IQ and, in, and in increasing education around this that will continue to see growth. I think it was a great conversation. I mean, thank you so much for your time. Any last words? Thank you so much for having me and look forward to continuing this dialogue and uh, can't wait for the next time. Great. I mean, thank you. Call me whenever you come to Korea, maybe if you have chance. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I would great. love to do that. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. 오늘 인터뷰를 통해 데일리 옵션과 그 활용 전략에 대해 깊이 있는 이해를 도울 수 있는 시간이 되었기를 바랍니다. 특히 에이스 미국 15% 프리미엄 시리즈는 한국에서 최초로 데일리 옵션을 활용한 ETF인데요. 이 데일리 옵션 프리미엄을 주된 분배금 재원으로 마련하고 있어 아직은 한국 투자자들에게 낯설 수는 있습니다. 하지만 이러한 여러 혁신적인 투자 도구가 여러분들의 포트폴리오에 도움이 되기를 바랍니다. 감사합니다. ACE ETF